First thing is, I really wish I mean, robocalls has gotten on the brain as the term of, uh, term of art for what this scandal is. This is an, uh, an election fraud scandal. So we need to remember it's an election fraud scandal because the Conservatives are twisting it around every day in the House of Commons, including today, even though during question period the Prime Minister was greeting the Prime Minister of Israel just down the hall. But we still are treated to a, a, a deflection and denial process that frankly has surprised me. I thought that at, at the very minimum, given that we have an election fraud scandal and the activities that are now established were crimes, and I'll quickly cover what we know and what we don't know, but I would have thought that Stephen Harper would have said something to the effect on Monday in the House of Commons of, these are very disturbing allegations. We will get to the bottom of it, uh, and no, no. He said, if you have evidence, give it to the to Electors Canada. The next defense, which was even harder to comprehend, was Dean Del Mastro's defense, which was, there is no evidence because we didn't do it. <laughs> they say, okay, but that really wasn't the question. What happened here? Who, we don't know who did. Now, in my writing in Senate Shell Violence back in 2008, and this is something you may or may not have seen, it was been in some of the media lately. I wasn't the candidate in 2008, Senate Shell Violence. But there was a very, very significant interference in the vote through automated dial calling into the riding. Um, and it, it was very plausible that it re-elected the Conservative MP, Gary Lund, against a challenger who'd been a former Green Party person, but she was running as a Liberal. Her name's Bryony Penn. And the NDP candidate, who was, whose name was on the ballot, had to withdraw when it was too late to take the name off the ballot. And in that instance, uh, it was seen as the best hope. I mean, people in Senate Shell Violence have been waiting a long time to have Gary Lund defeated. This year we got our wish, but in any case, back in 2008, on the night before the vote, thousands of calls were made into the riding to NDP supporters to say, get out and vote NDP. Now remember, there's no candidate for real. You could have had a majority of votes for the NDP and you would not have elected anybody because the candidate had withdrawn. The name was on the ballot, the candidate had withdrawn. So the effect of this, we think, was they went from 1% in the polls the week before, because there was no candidate, to a 6% vote return on election day, and it was enough of a margin to deprive the Liberal of the chance to defeat Gary Lund. I'm telling you more about this than you might imagine is relevant, but I think it's really relevant, because I think this was the pilot project for robocalls with Spanish Gulf Islands in 2008. And the reason it's really significant is, there were lots of complaints filed, and there was affidavit evidence. There was tons of effort put in to get to the bottom of this. The Liberal Party SGI complaint, the NDP in SGI complaint, Elections Canada did an investigation, the RCMP did an investigation, and they dropped the ball. They just said, well, we can't figure it out because, well, first they were spooked by the fact that the call displays were for an NDP phone number. That was, that was a false trail. That was not, we've now all learned about spoofing numbers. So then they ended up finding out the calls came from the United States. At that point, they basically said, we can't figure out who did them, and besides, and this was very strange, that since the candidate's name was still on the ballot, we don't really think it was election fraud. Very strange. They dropped the ball on this, and I posted on the Green Party site, if you want to go to the Green Party website, a blog written at the time they dropped the investigation by one of the citizens who works with a group called Conservation Voters of BC, in which he said, if they don't get a subpoena, if somebody doesn't find out who was responsible for these Carl Rove style black ops operations, we will see more of them in the next election. So in my writing in 2011, we did have calls going to voters saying, this is Elections Canada, your poll has changed. We had angry people, we had confused people. And we reported it. And within weeks of the election, May 19th, I sent a letter to the head of Elections Canada to say there are now widespread reports of phone calls that interfered, that, that told voters to go to different polling stations that were a blatant attempt to deny people the right to vote, the right to exercise their vote. Nothing could be more disturbing in a democracy than a blatant attempt to prevent people from voting, however they were going to vote. And 
I never did have an answer from Elections Canada, but I have read the information that's been filed. I'm hoping to put it on our website soon. We have to put it into a PDF. Uh, it's public court documents of the work that was done by Elections Canada to get to the bottom of it. So what we now know, and there's so far their investigation has been restricted to Guelph. And the one person investigating it, it's apparent to me he doesn't have adequate resources. If you read this court document yourself, you'll see it. He's, he refers to having gotten information from one phone company that the phone number he's looking at was a trunk route. So he didn't have any experts helping him. He said, so then I went to Google and put in trunk route, and this is the definition I got from Wikipedia. This is in the court affidavit. Uh, fortunately, he got expert help to figure out how the scam was being run, but it literally was the serendipity of uh, an informant who was another Guelph voter who'd been told to go to the wrong poll. This Guelph voter, a man named Peterson, if I recall from the affidavit, had written Elections Canada May 5th, I think, uh, in an email. Never got a response. Got concerned that he hadn't heard from them, wrote again in October, and by this time, Alan Marshall, the Elections Canada investigator who used to be the RCP, was on the case. So Alan Marshall contacted him, and yes, his story was just like everybody else's, got a call at home, told me to go to the old Quebec center or whatever it was, and Guelph to vote. The interesting thing is he said, and then I discovered, this is the idea, that Mr. Peterson was an expert, and he knew this and this and this and this, and he explained to me how these phone systems work, and how there's a, an overlay of video, and there's a web overlay over the phone systems, and I mean, a ton of what Elections Canada now knows that allowed them to decipher between Rack 9 and Bell and phone calls, and how the whole thing worked was based on the fact that one of the complainants was an expert. Sure. So we better get more resources into this pretty fast. Sure. What we know is that the scam phone calls that claim to be Elections Canada came through a system run by a company in Alberta called RAC9. We know that RAC9 does tons of work for the Conservative Party. We know that there were many phone calls between the Guelph Conservative Party, EDA, and their campaign, and RAC9. We know that the Guelph Electoral Finance Report, when they reported on their campaign for the Conservative Party, did not mention RAC9 as a supplier. So that raises alarm bells in the affidavit as submitted. The current answer from the Conservative Party in Guelph is that all the RAC9 charges went through a subcontract to one of the campaign workers in the Conservative Party, which is why RAC9 didn't appear in their electoral expense reports, as they are required to show where they spent all their money. So there's a lot we know. We don't have a complete smoking gun between the, con and I don't know that we'll find one. Mike Duffy, Senator Mike Duffy, has suggested that it wasn't the Conservative Party. It was probably rogue third party groups. Okay, I'll buy that. It might have been rogue third party groups. If you're going to commit an electoral crime in this country, and you want to stop people from voting, and you want to break the Elections Act and behave in that way, Maybe you, maybe you don't do it unless you're a rogue black ops operation. But the point is, I find it disturbing that Stephen Harper doesn't seem angry about this. Somebody tried to violate the right of Canadians to vote. And whether he thinks we're accusing him, or that's certainly the other party said, I've made no accusations against the Conservative Party. I'm being very careful to say only, we need an inquiry. We need an inquiry now. And the reason I told you the story about Savage Gulf Islands in, in 2008 was with tons of evidence and with lots of incentive to get to the bottom of it, Elections Canada and RCMP could not crack the case. So SGI in 2008 becomes a cold, a cold case. I don't want the however many ridings were, were bothered by calls at, that tried to stop people from voting this year. And I don't care. The other defense the Conservatives had is, well, Voting turnout went up, so it must not, it didn't work, so come on. Look, if you try to rob a bank and you fail, does that mean you're not going to jail? <laughs> they tried, somebody, I don't know who the they is, tried to keep Canadians who were not going to vote conservative, that's another pattern that's pretty clear. Someone tried to keep them from voting. That's a crime. And if you're a prime minister of this country, regardless of what party you're in and who benefited from the, from the crime, 
you better be angry about it, and you better care about democracy, or someone has to begin to wonder, what does he care about? Yeah.